I want to take you all back to 2015. It's a wild and different time. And a new game makes it through Steam Greenlight. It seemed to have promise, my young mind thought. Whoa! Ah! Ah! Paper! I mean, it was an open-world survival crafting game, which was the best and most perfect way to make games. Except it had one fatal flaw. There was no randomly generated world. How, how, how can I play this game till the day I die if there is an infinite replayable content? Oh, this is pointless. <laughs>such a wonderful example of what a talented game studio can do when their development can be subsidized with the sale of early access builds. You get all these games that come out into the market nowadays that just sit in early access for years, and even when they do release, they're just as buggy as when they started out. It makes you almost wish games couldn't even be sold in such a state. But on the other hand, when a developer is able to get some extra breathing room to really fine-tune their game, it really can result in some of the finest games ever made. Subnautica is the most beautiful game I've ever played. I don't mean graphically or even really aesthetically. There are lots of games on the market that top it on a purely visual level, but Subnautica is still more beautiful. When someone tells you about how good some show they're watching is or shows you a pretty picture, you go, What are you? And then that's the end of your experience. But when you've spent hours crawling up some stupid rock and finally make it to the top, that view holds so much more meaning than just how pretty it is. This is step one for making exploration meaningful. The payoff of that view, the payoff of that boss fight, the payoff of that story. Euphoric moments give stressful moments meaning, and Subnautica is constantly holding the player in suspense between two extremes. One moment you're collecting valuable resources in an alien underwater methane river, and it happens. Holy shit, that thing's bigger than my house. Oh my god. Oh, please, not my sub! There's no home swim away! Whoa! Is, is this thing an egg of that big monster, or is this an egg of something else? Why is this tree thing around it? There's a bunch of them. How long do they take to incubate? That is how it feels to play this game. Awe into terror. Suspense into anticipation. This game is built from the ground up with sprinklings of fantastical imagery of an alien make-believe world. But it's all so connected, it feels like this place could really be out there, orbiting some star. The creeping feeling in the back of your mind that there is always a bigger fish makes those moments when you meet some non-hostile NPC, an interaction that would normally be an extremely mundane occurrence, becomes a small, exciting discovery. However, this alone isn't enough to make an enjoyable experience for the player. Subnautica employs the next most important step of engaging exploration. That is, offering the player gameplay-related rewards. It's nice to finish a mission and get a cutscene, but if I could just go watch that cutscene on YouTube and have the same experience, then that experience ends up being one-dimensional. You have to incentivize many parts of the player's brain to complete all these random tasks you're telling them to do. You don't have to give the player the god-slaying sword just for killing a couple bandits. You could make them work for it a bit. I mean... Look at Breath of the Wild, another game centered around exploration. All around the world you can find these little kokiri seeds by doing little puzzles and crap around the map, but by the late game these seeds are nearly worthless. You got all the easy ones, so now you whip out the map. Then you start running all the way over to one half to fight two of these assholes, lose your two favorite weapons, eat 10 KFC buckets worth of chicken, climb up some big ass mountain, move a big ass rock the size of your character in a 100 yard dash to a ring of similarly sized rocks just to get one goddamn seed of what? Was that I need 30 of those to get my next upgrade? Well, I guess that was all pointless, wasn't it?
But the reason you don't immediately go blow your own brains out after all this is because doing all that shit was actually kind of fun, even if the reward wasn't too great. Don't get me wrong, having a satisfying payoff to a player's work is important, but it isn't nearly as important as making that work enjoyable. This is one of the few games with underwater movement that doesn't make me want to kill myself. You actually move really well through all this cold steam, unnaturally so. Like, you can swim circles around fish in this game. In my experience with games like this, the developers really want to heighten that feeling of helplessness that the ocean naturally inspires in our land-based species by making your character move like a goddamn idiot underwater. Like, I get that humans move poorly in water, but you have to imagine that in these games, some developer had to go into the game and code out just how ass it is to move underwater. Ah! <laughs> I hate it! Oh my god, now I'm dead! You can really tell these devs were able to sit down and think about the mechanics of their game. They didn't just go, oh, well, there's an ocean, so why don't we put boats in our game? They went, nah, that's dumb. Okay, we have this depth system where the player gets more upgrades so they can go deeper into the planet. So let's place our item upgrades and unlocks at depths in relation to when we believe the optimal time to give the player that item is. This way, the player has freedom to move around on the overworld, but also gets newer and more dangerous zones being discovered more naturally as the player's playtime grows and is able to explore deeper into the planet. You really don't need to give a shit about the story in this game, but if you're a nut for a good story like me, Subnautica tells a compelling one. In another display of the game's mechanics complementing another aspect of the game, the dread and vastness of Planet 4565 make you feel lonely. As you receive emergency signals with voice logs from something that doesn't have gills, you rush to their location only to learn of their untimely demise. You feel alone again. Evidence of prior survivors and old bases, logs of people more talented and resourceful than yourself bring more dread as you again learn of even their demise. This unconquerable, wild, untamed ocean swarming with creatures more powerful than you, quite literally making you feel small and insignificant, each glimmer of hope blocked by some massive obstacle. And yet you push through, rise above the challenge, scream like a little bitch, then enjoy the pure euphoria, flipping off a gigantic monster twice the size of anything to have ever walked the earth. Knowing full well that you're gonna have to walk past it again on your way out. Overcoming these challenges and finding happiness on this terrifying dying world brings meaning to the nightmares. This is one of the few games to give me consistent, legit, actual nightmares. This is a true open world game. When you play it, it always feels like you have a ton of options or paths you can go down, and all of them lead to something worthwhile to the player. All these options don't overwhelm you. You can approach them at your own pace. The ocean isn't going to come out and get you. Enjoy your time swimming through the world of Subnautica. There's no rush. But it isn't a battle royale, which is the best and most perfect way to make video games, so goodbye!